three, two, one. We're live, Ryan. All right. Cool. Post Christmas edition, pre what's it called? New Year's uh-huh. edition. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be an exciting show. Um, yeah, today's topic, this is episode 42. Uh yeah, before we get into the topic though, 42. <laughs> I know. Dude, it just kind of blends together. <laughs> I, I was actually I had to ask Disney, I'm like, dude, what, what was going on? Like, what the hell was I doing? <laughs> I was 42. I think we'd uh just got married. And so I think that was, yeah, like the first year that we were we were married, mm-hmm. um, which we've been together for, I think, five years before we got married. So it was not like a, a huge change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a big deal. But I'm trying to think 42. Uh, shit, man. I think, yeah, that was the year in the business we were like really aggressively growing, 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 laying the foundation, um, which a lot of lessons learned came from yeah. and a lot of mistakes that I was making. I hadn't quite figured out it, that I was making mistakes. And uh yeah, that's that's where I was. Forty two is a good year. It was fun. Starting to get like in shape again, like get size back and like be athletic and like, all right, you can be athletic in your forties. I was feeling good about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, you made a good point. And it, I'm just curious, because I do it with my girlfriend, is that you asked her like, what were we doing in forty two? Cause you, you kinda yeah. in that way. But I do that with my girlfriend a lot, but it's more like for plans where it's like I don't keep a schedule <laughs> of like our personal things. I just always go to her like, what are we doing? Like what Oh, what did you it. figure out? Like, no, you- I, I find out when she puts it in the schedule. I'm like, oh, that's we're going to that. Right. We're doing that thing. I'm yeah. like, all right, but that's good because a lot of it, I just wouldn't. It wouldn't happen. <laughs> it was up to me. She's just good at it too, and she's like, I'll find the best deals. I'll do this. Blah blah blah. I'm yeah. like, all right, cool. Just credit card, ma'am. You know, you like go. that's all. You just figure it out, and well, she's the best at it. You gotta, you gotta work within your strengths. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. But like I said, man, dude, who you spend your life with is the most important business partnership you'll ever make. Because mm-hmm. running a life is a lot like running a business. You have mm-hmm. your cost of everything. You have your income. You have your, you know, your plans and your projects and your investments and. Like shit, dude. Is running a business is very similar to running your life. Right. You gotta have the right people in play. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so today's topic, we're basically just going to show you guys how well I'm gonna talk a little bit about my business, where we fucked up, where we're going, uh, how I how I realized uh how I realized shit was wrong and needed to change, mm-hmm. and then steps that we took to change it. So hopefully. Uh, you guys will get something out of this and be able to apply the lessons to your own business. Um, one of the things that I found really interesting was that I thought at the beginning of the year, I was like, dude, awesome. Because we, we usually crush Q4. And we're usually like, because most of our business comes from apparel brands and they usually crush Q4 because of all the sales. Um, so we usually make most of our money in Q4. And so we're coming out of that that big mistake that I made two years ago. Uh, we're almost crashed the whole company. And then this year we're like, okay, we're back on our feet ready to go and we're going to accelerate um, in Q4 and get ready to like start start New Year's like sprinting. Mm-hmm. And dude, everybody's been getting crushed. Mm-hmm. All our clients are getting hammered. Um, it's a whole bunch of things. It's the inflation is causing everything to go nuts. So, so the inflation, so all the cost of goods has gone up quite a bit. Um, and then with the inflation happening, people are spending less money because they're scared of the recession. So they're not purchasing what they used to purchase. And then also uh, advertising is so expensive right now. Q4 is the most expensive time to advertise. Mm. So because of the uh, changes in the iOS system and the tracking and the lowered return on ad spend the last couple of years, a lot of businesses just completely stopped doing advertising in Q4 because it wasn't profitable. And so they didn't sell as much. And <laughs> so that's that's where I fucked up. I I built this business model at Industry Threadworks to help brands grow and scale. So our whole purpose in life is to help these guys grow. And when they do well, we do well. That's how the business model is designed. And I thought like, oh, okay, that's awesome. I'm, I'm building something that helps people and when they win, we win, and it works. Um, what I didn't realize is that it can also go backwards. I mean, it's so simple looking at it, but I didn't realize that when our clients let off the gas or stop selling or stop doing advertising, that affects our revenue. Mm-hmm. And this is the biggest thing I realized is this, we have no way of controlling our own revenue stream, which is fucking weird because we're in manufacturing. So we don't actually sell to anybody except brands. Yeah. So when brands let off and they're not selling as much, we we can go out and get new clients, but that's a slow project. That's not like, oh, I can just turn it on. I can run a sale. I can do whatever. We literally have no way of c- 
creating our own income. We don't have anything to sell. I was like, holy shit, I can't believe, I can't believe we went this long without noticing it. And uh, I can't believe I didn't fucking fix it. So we noticed that I think probably three months ago. And so uh, this is when Coda and I started talking about doing these information products. So like, dude, I have all this information. It's really useful to a very specific type of person. How can we get this information out there? And also create a product that we can sell. Because, and even, even everything that we sell in manufacturing, our margins are super small. So even though the, the top line revenue is good, our actual take home, like after we pay all our overhead and expenses and everything, is, is very little. Mm -hmm. So it's just the nature of manufacturing. So this solves a lot of problems for us. Is information products has high margins. It's great uh, information for brands. And maybe the best thing about it, if new brands buy this packet of information and if you listen I'm not trying to sell you on it yet I'm just mm -hmm. saying <laughs> maybe, maybe later <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just pay attention right I'm now I'm just saying the Suck reasons why this works yeah because yeah. um, the goal is if we can sell new brands who need this information the most quality information is really going to help them uh, within a year or two they'll be big enough where they're good clients for us because one of the problems with our business models we're not really geared for uh, small brands or small small runs were mainly geared for medium to high volume. Mm -hmm. So we you usually can't work with new startup brands because they're just not doing the volume where it makes sense to work with us. We're too expensive at low volume. But with this, um, we can give the apparel brand something that is actually going to help them grow. And if they execute on it and they do it, within one to two years, now they're big enough where we are a good fit for production. Mm -hmm. So it just, it spins that flywheel. And I think it's, uh, it's kind of pulling all the pieces of our brand in together to... Um, to make sense mm -hmm. and to work together. Uh, but damn, dude, that was so frustrating to me. Like, I'm glad I noticed that. But you know when you see something, you're like, it's so obvious. Like, why the fuck didn't I see this before? It's so frustrating, man. Because uh, you've been doing, what, 15 plus years, right? Yeah. And just the apparel, like just business sides, you know? And it's just like, even you, like, you think it's obvious, Right. Even the people that still need help, they don't think it's obvious yet because they're still new to it, you mm -hmm. know? But it's like, that's the game of business. I and mean, that's what we talk about every fucking week is like, dude, it like, it happens, but it's normal, you know? And it's just like, yeah. now you figure out a way to fix it. And what the, what is that? These products that we're, mm -hmm. we're talking about, you know? Well, also too, I'm, dude, one course. of the things I'm, yeah, <laughs> still not selling yet. Yeah, yeah. No, just no, 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 no. Sponsored by us. <laughs> but one of the things that I'm excited about after I noticed that, I was like, shit, okay, what do we need to change uh, in order to uh, round out this, this to make our uh, brand look on the outside the way it actually functions on the inside? Mm -hmm. And took a look at our website and I realized, man, our website fucking sucks. It doesn't do a good job of it, telling anybody what we do. It's not cool looking because um, we made it like two, probably two years ago when we were focusing on, we thought the evolution of industry was going to be like for big corporate clients and working with those. So we tried to like professionalize and, and clean up and make more corporate-y look in the thing. But that's not our fucking brand, dude. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's not who we are. Mm -hmm. And that's not who we service. And it was it was also a remnant of that time where I was trying to like, oh, I'm gonna be less controlling. I'm gonna let off the I'm gonna let off the reins. I'm gonna let people do their thing. And then we ended up with this website that like uh it does not represent <laughs> what, what we do. do yeah. yeah, Disney created the website and it was her kind of her vision. I was letting her run with it. And um it's good. It's exactly what we wanted at the time. We just didn't realize that that was not the right choice for direction for the company. So what I'm excited about is that now through this um, kind of revamping of the company, at least the aesthetics on the outside, we're going to reposition it as more of a B2C brand. So when you look at the website, and it's probably take us like a month, be completed in like two probably. But when you look at the website in two months, it's going to look like an apparel brand. It won't look like it does now with like this kind of like we help brands grow and this obtuse like wording and all this information. It's going to look like a fucking raw, like heavy detail uh, apparel line. And if you, but if you peel a layer back, it's like, hey, this is what we do. Would you like your brand to look like this? Mm -hmm. And we can do that. And then we can highlight the functionality of it and all the capabilities. Um, but I'm excited about getting back into it, man. Just having a brand and treating it like a brand again and having fun and doing photo shoots and driving cars. Because I know you have 
industry, the apparel, right? Industry mm-hmm. that works. But then you have archive fulfillment. Yeah. So it, are you just trying to keep those completely separate in the aspect of like when someone goes on industry thread works, they see apparel and that's what it is, the store. And then if they unpeel it, you say like, oh, but we also have our own fulfillment company that helps other brands grow. Yeah. Archive is going to be its own website pretty mm-hmm. soon. Got it. Um, so just smart. Yeah. It's got Super a different, smart. it's got a different trajectory. It, it's, I mean, it is technically and really uh, a whole separate company. It's just that, you know, at the top level, it's all owned by the same people. Right. <laughs> and we, we kind of run, run it the same way. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a different, a different animal to run. Uh, but yeah, that's another thing we're going to change this year is kind of have, have archive, have its own website, go after, you know, bigger clients and, and build that out further. Um, but you know, that's not as exciting. I'm, I'm excited to get back into like building, building a brand, you know, because yeah. building infrastructure is different than building a brand. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to like, be more creative. Because mm-hmm. I like, I get where you're at in the aspect of like the manufacturing. You're kind of like that middleman mm-hmm. where it's like you you can help them build their apparel side, but also like you can't help them with like the aspect of everything behind their company. You yeah. know, so if they're going like slowly going down, you're kind of like I can only what create shirts and help them with the back end of certain things. It's like yeah. but it's not going to save everything. Well, it's frustrating too because like I can tell them what to do. I, yeah. can, I can tell them what I suggest they do, but I can't do it for them. And a lot of times like with, with brands, man, a lot of it's, it's ego and, and like, I'm just trying to give them the best information I can without ego. Like, Hey, I, I want you to do this cause it's going to fucking work. Like this is the number, this is the data that says this is the best choice for you. And you know, it is, but then you don't want to listen to it. Cause it just comes from me. And then you're like, well, fuck that guy. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I'm trying to help you. This is for you. <laughs> um, but also it helps happen. Like, uh, most of our staff is women. So like brand managers are, are mostly, uh, women. And then Disney, you know, obviously being women as CEO, uh, that helps. Honestly, it helps us get our clients to do what we need them to do mm. because it helps remove the ego and like, well, I don't know. There's been a few times, not current clients so much, but there's been a few times with previous clients where it was some like ego challenge. I'm like, they just didn't do what I suggested they do just because I'm the one who said it. Mm-hmm. It was it was kind of weird, man. But those guys ended up real fucking struggling. So yeah, dude. fuck them. Because <laughs> you talked about you didn't expect Q4 to go like this this year for you at yeah, all. No. And there's there's different reasons behind that, but you realize your biggest one is like, it's being that middle person in the way. And it's like, how do we actually control the money that we bring in by not just having like a outsourced company or like other clients relied, right? It's more yeah. just like you're able to sell something. Yeah. So why do you think it just failed besides those reasons and like how like the next, fo- this following year is going to be different? Well, it's not that it's not that it failed. It's just that we realized that it's very scary to not have control over your own revenue, mm-hmm. and there's nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, in our current business model, we have nothing to sell. Yeah. So we get a lot of attention from people who want to start new brands and stuff. But aside from consulting, I'm like, I really can't. I don't have anything to sell them. I don't have any products. They can't really buy anything from us. So I'm like. Kind of like, hey, here's all this free information on YouTube. Here's all this stuff. But they're not going to go look at it because it's, it's not packaged up. It's not organized correctly. So it's there. It's just not It's not in a consumable format. Um, but yeah, it was, it's not that it, it... It's not that it definitely didn't fail. And it's not that it didn't work. It's just that this whole season of uh, what's been happening on the front end, like the, um, the sales side for the brands is having a trickle down effect on this. Mm-hmm. So it really made me realize like, fuck, this is a big uh, hole in our game and uh, we need to fix it. Mm-hmm. So basically it just, we just needed to offer different products, diff- different capabilities, different services. Um, but that's the kind of stuff I like, man. Cause I mean, if we kept going when everything was freaking smooth sailing, I probably would have never figured this out. And then I would have never, uh, cause I actually wrote all the chapters we have for the information products. I actually wrote two years ago. Mm-hmm. I wrote them all down. I just didn't do anything with them. But this has been kicking the pants the last couple months. We we're like, oh shit, we don't have no, we have no control over our revenue. We can't do all this stuff. Talk to you. And we're like, okay, let's do some fucking videos. Let's put the PDFs out. Let's do it. It was a trip when you showed me those 15 lessons. I was like, what? Like, 
And you're like, I don't really I have a couple chapters on the website. I was like, what is what the heck's happening? Like, why don't we just build something from that? Yeah, yeah. Like, let's just do it. And then yeah. just like create videos from that. What else can we do? You're like, what else can we offer people to help them grow? Yeah. You know, it's like, what do they need? Okay, Facebook group for support and accountability be good. Monthly Zoom calls so people have live question and answers. Like it was basically like thousands of conversations with hundreds of different brands. Mm -hmm. What do they all need? What's the template? You know, what's the outline of what it takes to build a successful brand? And that's basically what we build. Mm -hmm. It's the info products, whether it's video. This is now, now we're pitching you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real though, it's good. Yeah. So even if, if, if you're listening to this, they don't, you don't have to buy it. It's expensive. But I will say, Look at your own business, and mm -hmm. if there's something that you, because a lot of people are struggling right now, look at your own business and figure out if there's something that you can break apart or break off or segmentize, or maybe there's another audience that you have that you're not servicing yet, that you're not offering a product or a service to. Is there something you can build off or fracture off your main company to offer to them um, that might be a slightly different than your current model? I know for us, it's been huge. And honestly, dude, I'm super excited about doing it. These mm -hmm. are the conversations I want to have. I, mm -hmm. I love building brands and to be able to help people that are doing it in real time where you have a specific place, like they ask specific questions about building apparel brands. I'm like, dude, I know the answer. I'm so glad you fucking asked because I want you to fucking crush it. Here's the answer. Go fucking win. Mm -hmm. Like, so I'm, I'm excited to, to dive into that more. Um, but yeah, if, if, if you're listening to this, it's pretty expensive. I think we're at 2,500 bucks yep. for the whole package right now. Mm -hmm. But it's a but bargain because you're going to be saving that totally much bargain. time. Dude, like, yeah, dude, like <laughs> me and you talked oh, it about is. it, like for what it is, you're saving so much time. Dude, just, it, if, if I had that information, we're first starting for us, it would have saved me at least two to three years and probably $50,000. Fifty to seventy thousand dollars of just mistakes. Mm -hmm. So it is absolutely like no joke. It is fucking absolutely worth it. But the thing is, it's like I was talking to you. I was talking to Dylan about it. It's like yeah, twenty five hundred. But you're saving time. You're saving mm -hmm. money. But the thing is, like you're joining a community that people are a part of. It's not even just like just you. There's people yeah. in that community that have built six, seven, eight figure brands. Well, it's a it's lonely. Like, it's a lonely path, dude. Yeah. Like entrepreneurship and and apparel brands have their own specific challenges too. And um. I think it's a cool to be a cool place for people to just come and learn and, and but also to share, man. Share mm -hmm. like, hey, dude, I'm having a rough fucking season. Like, what are you guys using for mm -hmm. your ad spend? What are you guys using? What's your return ad spend? What's your conversion rate? Like, just to share best, you know, best practices and SOPs. Um, but so if you're listening, I think, are we going to have the cheaper version or the segmented version? By the time this is out, yeah, this will be out tomorrow. Okay. So yeah. by the time you listen to this, yeah, <laughs> there will be so <laughs> link in bio. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> link in the description. <laughs> we we figured out that uh, it's a big chunk. So twenty five hundred dollars is what's what's considered like a high ticket item. Yeah, and that's not really um, the people that this is mainly meant to serve are new apparel brands. Mm -hmm. But the problem with new apparel brands is you don't know how valuable the information is because you don't know what you don't know exactly. Yet. Yeah. So we we decided that we're going to break it up. So. The videos are going to be um, a specific one, but now you can buy each chapter in a PDF format mm -hmm. for just fifty bucks, mm -hmm. and then you can have access to the Facebook group, which I think is what going to be forty nine bucks right a month, now, yeah. or something like that. And then also comes with the webinar access. So um, we're we're breaking it up. By the time you read this, it will be done and mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. um, and link in bio, link, <laughs> <laughs> link bio, link descriptions, and. Um, Ryan said webinars, but he meant Zoom calls, yeah, live Zoom, Zoom calls. Yeah, yeah. So if you do have questions, mm -hmm. right, you're going to have a group of people that have probably questions that you didn't think of that are going to help you. And we're going to have those Zoom calls a couple times a month. So that's very important. Um, I'm excited, dude. Like these are, these are conversations I've had with so many brand owners mm -hmm. in private, in person, like one-on-ones or, or on, you know, Zoom calls, just working out their own stuff. And dude, everybody feels like they're fucking alone. I am so excited to get people in a room together that all don't realize they have the same, <laughs> you know, problems and solutions and yeah. trajectory and be like, look, motherfuckers, this is it. Mm -hmm. We're on this together. This is our whole path. Like, let's fucking win together. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm looking forward to it, man. We just gotta get like, you know, get it out there. Mm -hmm. It's like anything else, just gotta do the work, man. Just do it. I got to work on the videos. I got to film them, help you with the script, help you edit them. Oh, you're probably right. so sick of my voice. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I want to let people know out there. So I'm on the video side of business and like a whole bunch of other stuff, like creating courses and uh, marketing, all that stuff. But the information, like 
I talk about with Ryan, he's like pro of apparel, right? Every time we talk about it weekly. When I went through these videos and edited them and I I put my soul and you saw like the graphics behind it oh, and yeah. the aspect of to really make things make sense, right? And mm-hmm. easily like for- formatable, like format content. This is not just for apparel. It's a huge yeah. part of apparel, mm-hmm. but there's these chapters where it's like, even as a business owner, I was like, damn, I didn't even know that, but yeah. it, it helped me already. Like, how do you set it up for sale? How mm-hmm. do you how do you establish evaluation? The partnerships, partnership behind issues, that. Mm-hmm. setting up roles, responsibilities, marketing. Yeah. It does all. It's not all about apparel brand. Yeah, it, there's marketing. How you go about mm-hmm. the advertising? Like, yeah, yeah, choosing think, products. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know. So yeah. it, there's a lot. You know, maybe we'll just show probably, them all real quick. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there's probably about. About half the chapters are very specific to apparel, like data analysis. Like, how do you find your your sizing ratio? How do you figure out what your sales trajectory is? How do you know how much to order? Like, mm-hmm. how do you deal with artists? Um, but aside from those, like, very specific things, uh, building apparel brand is just like any other product based business. Every product based business is just. Um, it's just that you happen to be using t-shirts and some people use fucking stuffed alligators or pillows or whatever it happens to be. But an e-com product-based business is, is they're almost all identical. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I've sent a few of the chapters to some of my friends that don't, uh, that don't actually have apparel brands. Mm-hmm. And I just sent them like five or six chapters that are general business stuff and they're digging it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I also told, I think I said on an earlier podcast, but uh, if you're, listening to this podcast, if you're investing your time listening to us, <laughs> yeah. um, I will send you a free chapter yeah. of your choice. Mm-hmm. So, but you got to, you got to reach out. I don't know who you are. Yeah. I keep telling you all the time, hey, yeah. DM us, yeah. <laughs> tell us what you need. So if you're listening to this, shoot me a DM and let me know which chapter you would like. And I will personally fucking email it to you for free. It's $49. Yeah. Like you're saving 40, 40, 50 bucks, you know, so you're getting that for free. Yeah. All you got to do is DM. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. I, we're changing up so much shit. I feel like we're totally starting over again. Mm-hmm. And I guess we are because the, the main part of the operations of the business, Disney's running perfectly. So there's not a whole lot that I need to or even can do in that. So this is a whole new like uh, project mm-hmm. for me. I'm, I'm stoked. I get to be creative again, uh-huh. like build stuff. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. For Visionary Collective, me and Dylan were addicted to it mm. in the aspect of like just like you said, you're re- you're rebuilding another brand, like we're rebuilding that brand. Like mm. this is a new, like a new, like a new baby. You know, yeah. we always talk about it. it's like this is a new, whatever. You're like you're sh- you're starting from new, like scratch. And yeah, you're building with the the information and every knowledge you've learned over the last fifteen years in these cor- this course and PDFs and all this stuff. We get to be a part of that. And it's just like, this is really exciting where we get to like, now it's our job to like, what, how, like how many people can we get this in front of? Mm-hmm. Because it's not just like a course where it's like, where it's helping them make money yeah. in an aspect where it's like, oh, dude, like you have so, oh, this is what I want to really say. There's so many fake fucking people out there yes. creating courses <laughs> that don't know what the yeah. fuck they're talking about. <laughs> I know. And you show, so I, annoying. I'll show you like people on my side. You showed me people on their your, the apparel oh, side, yeah. and I'm like, God, mind blown. I bought just some ca- of this stuff too to test them. I'm like, bro, okay, like if I'm gonna think about this, I gotta look at competition. And exactly like you're saying, I I saw one. I'm like, oh, what is this? And I bought like a thirty five dollar chapter or something. It was literally like four paragraphs, and two of the paragraphs were fucking wrong. I'm like, what the fuck? You guys are telling them wrong shit, mm-hmm. and you're charging thirty five dollars for four paragraphs of information. Mm-hmm. So like, when somebody buys ours, it's like fucking robust mm-hmm. they're anywhere from four to ten pages long yeah. like and it's a lot of information man like i feel like this podcast and what i talk about in business is very like i'm like 80 percent sure that i'm right about that stuff because everybody has their own journey and entrepreneurship and all businesses look different and i'm still just learning i feel like every day i'm learning something new so i don't know business you know maybe slightly better than most people but i can say without a fucking shadow of a doubt Nobody in the fucking world has the information I have and we have here for apparel brands. Mm-hmm. Everything I say on apparel brands is 100 fucking percent the truth. Mm-hmm. And I fucking know it. And I can prove it with 15 years of fucking data and, and experience. Um, and so I think, yeah, that's why I want to focus just on apparel brands first. Because yeah, everything exactly. else is like, yeah. I don't know 100%, yeah. but I fucking know 100% everything that we're putting out in the apparel stuff mm-hmm. is fucking 
the shit. Yeah, man. And plus everyone you've worked with, like clients wise, like I don't know yeah. if how many you could say and want to talk about, but in the aspect of like, they're big companies, right? Some of them are pretty big, yeah. Yeah, so it's just like, you're not just saying, hey, like I've, I've helped one company, I've yeah. made a course. It's like, nah, man, 15 years of experience. Some of them are like, billion, just, like we got a billion dollar brand out in our mm-hmm. freaking warehouse fulfilling for them. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's pretty cool stuff. Like, they're, yeah. not, they're not an apparel brand. It's a B, I mean, not an M, they, a yeah. B. <laughs> they do have, uh, I guess they do have apparel. They've got other... How would you say products? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they got products. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing illegal. If you're listening from the FBI, <laughs> nothing illegal. But uh, but yeah, it's been interesting, dude. It's been it's been a wild ride, and um, I'm excited to get out there, dude. It's just like like I said, it's a whole new chapter for me. I don't really do much in the day to day here operationally because Disney handle has such a good handle on it. Um, so this is yeah, whole new like from the ground up, starting in project. But I, dude, I think that's so fucking key. Is that like you said, you guys are addicted to it. You have to have the drive. You have yeah. to, and this is also when, when we're rebranding industry as a B2C brand, create, destroy is going to be the main thing because that's the process. That's the evolution. Like you have to break something in order to strengthen it. Same thing with building muscle in the gym. If you go and you, how do you, how do you build muscle? You have to fucking break it down. You have to stress it to the point where it's no longer strong enough to support what you're asking it to do. And then it fucking grows. Mm-hmm. Same thing with building a brand or building yourself or personal development or anything. You cannot achieve something unless you fucking make room for it. And to make room for it, you have to destroy what's already there so you can build something better. Mm-hmm. And I think, I, I think it's just the nature of entrepreneurship and anybody who's driven or wants to achieve at any level, whether that's, you know, professional sports or mm-hmm. professional business or professional, you know, as an executive is like, you, you have to want to have the drive to get better. Mm-hmm. And in order to do that, you have to be comfortable sacrificing yourself and some of these comfortabilities and these little things in your life that are nice. You have to be able to destroy those things mm-hmm. in order to build something that is truly fucking meaningful and big and, and relevant. Mm-hmm. It's true, man. I agree. Because part of, like when I'm in business, sometimes I'm like, "What the fuck's happening?" But then you have to do something that's different to catapult you farther. Mm-hmm. Even if like, "Oh shit!" Like, "Oh, is this the right move?" Well, you've been doing like the same shit for a year. Like, l- l- what about if we try something a little yeah, different? It's you like, got oh, evolve. There we go. Yeah. Now it makes sense. It was hard and different and wasn't sure, but now you understand that's the way you got to go. Yeah. You know, to create the new website, we have to destroy the old one. But that's that's the way it should be. Mm-hmm. You know, life is built upon built upon the decaying. Remus of shit that didn't work. Mm-hmm. That's how you fucking progress. Mm-hmm. And the seasons you're in. The seasons, you know? yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, I would say if you're in a pearl brand, yeah. honestly, the whole package is going to be good. Um, but even if you're not, probably just pick and choose a couple. If, if I wasn't in a pearl brand, but I just wanted to, you know, get into like regular business and e-com products and just wanted a little more, you know, sharper uh, information on that, mm-hmm. I just pick and choose probably two to three chapters out of there and then the Facebook group. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think, like probably... What's that going to be? 150 bucks, mm-hmm. something like that. Yep. So yeah, it's 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 nothing crazy, mm-hmm. not at all. There's something else I was going to say. I fucking forgot though. Is it about a certain product or like what we have to offer? Replays, stuff like that. Uh, probably, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, like we said, uh, we'll leave the links in the description. Ryan's definitely shoot it on his Instagram, and I will too. And uh, it's going to be easy access. You'll get the. Uh, Lifetime access is, I think, what I want to touch on too. Is oh, that yeah. Bundles, the 2500 But that's lifetime. And yeah. things are honestly going to be updating. And there's going to be certain parts that you're just going to have access to right away. Plus events. Yeah. all future. Oh, the events, dude. That's another thing I'm excited about too. Oh, so, dude, I'm so excited about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm not really pitching you guys. Yeah. I'm just so excited yeah, about dude. this because it's fucking rad. Um, so, the events that we're going to start building out is we're going to have people here at our warehouse and at our partner print shop. And we're going to basically have people come in for a day. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to go explore the print shop, show people how it actually functions, how screens work, how emulsion works, with neck labels, like folding, bagging, the whole the whole process. So they can actually see it, touch it, feel it. Um, and then we're going to bring them to... Uh, bring them to the warehouse so they can see a fulfillment operation. Like, what does that look like? Like, what are our systems and processes? How do we have our boxes labeled? Like, who do you go to for the... Uh who do you go for for the custom cardboard boxes? Who do you go to for labels? Who do you go to for the racks? Like everything, we're going to pull back the curtain on every single part of the apparel brand experience and just be like, hey, it's, it might cost like, I don't know, $500 or $1,000 for the day, but you're going to get every fucking thing you've ever seen 
for running a seven figure apparel brand. Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, guys, they're in San Diego too. <laughs> so oh, yeah, it's a I forgot. Good place to come. <laughs> <laughs> I just forget it, everybody. <laughs> yeah, right. It says everything's in California. Mm -hmm. California is like the center. It's like the United States, just exactly. the center of the universe. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, they're my <laughs> <laughs> Dude, events are huge. You get to, and the cool thing is, you get to network, mm -hmm. right? And they, you get to ask people. Get to ask you questions specifically. They get to ask your. Uh, your employees, other people that you're in your network ask you questions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a lot of a lot of big net networking events. Yeah, too. dude, Sean does that for the flying events every. Uh, I think it's every third Thursday for the Lions Den. People just fly in, and uh, dude, it's been great. I've I've been to a couple of them. It's awesome, man. Like a lot of really good insight. Everybody's just open and honest. Like, hey, here's here's my business. Here's the problems I'm currently having in it, and then we just dissect it and and figure out solutions. Mm -hmm. It's been it's been rad, man. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I remember what I was gonna say. I was gonna say something I was gonna add. <laughs> ah. Ah, fuck it. I guess it wasn't, wasn't that important anyway, I guess. You'll put, you'll put it on your story if you remember. <laughs> right? Put it on the yeah. story. All right, man. Well, cool. 42. Um, yeah, like I said, we're not trying to sell you guys on this. I'm just excited. Um, if you've been following me for a while and you've been to our website, I'm sorry. Our website has <laughs> been sucking ass. Uh, completely my fault because I... I let off the gas and, and let other people, you know, I didn't follow my vision and I let other people do the things. And now um, what you're going to see with industry is complete change. And we're going to be going uh, straightforward with what you'll see. you be aligned with my vision for the company, the aesthetics of it. Like we're going to do, um, we're going to revamp all the designs. We're getting rid of a lot of stuff that I'm not personally, it's not my favorite. We're going to have like, we're not going to make much money on it. Cause it's too expensive. We're gonna all the nerdy shirts that I have, like with the super high end Peruvian cotton and like the blind hem <laughs> stitching, dude. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be so killer. I don't know if anybody else is gonna appreciate it, but like, dude, this is gonna be the shit. I'm gonna look at him like I fucking love everything that we have. So I'm looking forward to uh, creating more, mm -hmm. getting on the creation side. Um, but uh, yeah, if you guys been following along, be prepared for some changes, and uh, I think you'll dig it. You're definitely gonna dig it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Shake and bake. Shake and bake.